Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Davis, what, what prison are we talking about here? Danbury Correctional, FCI. And that's in what state? What did you say? What state? Uh, Danbury, Connecticut. Okay. And you were isolated for a year and a half for making a three-way phone call? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheriff Boyd, tell me about the 287G program. Um, local law enforcement works with the federal government how? Yes, sir. We are a participating member of 287G, and what that is is at the Goliad County Sheriff's Office, this allows us to enter into the federal computer system, identify somebody who is a criminal alien, and then actually go into the system to have a detainer placed upon them. So at the Sheriff's Office, I have uh, one of the deputies, Virginia Escajito, is trained by ICE in order to go in and perform that function. What we do is we identify individuals who are illegal aliens who have already been arrested on criminal charges and are in jail. There is a misunderstanding that that is something we do in the field and we cannot and we do not. It's only for those people who are inmates within the jail that are identified as illegal aliens and are potentially uh, yeah. eligible for an ICE detainer. So what's a sanctuary city or a county? How, how do they differ from what you do? In Goliad, we enforce the laws provided to us by the legislative body in the state of Texas. Basically, what you have in a sanctuary city is, is a governmental body that decides that they do not wish to enforce the laws that have been uh, passed so by the legislative body. So a sanctuary city or county, they'll have somebody detained. They'll find out they're in a legal status. They refuse to cooperate with the federal government to, to get the person detained or issue a detainer. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, you're in Texas. I'm sure you have a lot of encounters. Uh, is illegal immigration a problem for Texas law enforcement? Much like that chart that you put up there a while ago that showed over a 400% increase in, uh, in apprehensions, uh, Goliad County Sheriff's Office, prior to the current presidential administration, arrested on average 77 people a year. Last year, we arrested 482 people. And so our number one charge is, of course, drugs, which is tied to the open border. And then we also have quite a few people that come to jail for uh, smuggling and engaging in organized criminal activity. It has had a tremendous impact uh, on the communities throughout South Texas, including ours. Back to the Vera case, uh, this, uh, this individual is facing murder charges in Georgia. He was apprehended, paroled in September of 2022 had a law enforcement engagement in New York, I think in October uh, of that year. So we finally got the file, and it says, I can introduce the entire file if you'd like, but I'll just, this one little sentence here, parole due to detention capacity at Central Processing, Processing Center in El Paso, Texas. Now that's what his file shows. It wasn't parole because they had a unique benefit to the country or they had a humanitarian need, as the law requires. He was parole because of capacity problems. Um, Ms. Peeler, in one of your reports, I think, you or recommendations you made to ICE, have you made recommendations to ICE? We did. We made recommendations to ICE in our report, Senator. Okay. And one of them said there should require presumption of release from ICE detention for people who have been reported existing vulnerabilities, including but not limited to people with serious medical conditions, mental health conditions, disabilities, LGBTQIA people, and survivors of torture and or sexual violence. So you recommend a presumption that they should be released, that category, but not limited to that category. Senator, I've been asked to talk about the health effects of solitary confinement. And given that the effects are extremely detrimental, particularly for vulnerable populations, and that ICE has directives protecting those populations, it would be an improvement for their health for them to be presumptively released. But, but we released. should, in this category, but not limited to this category, there should be a presumption of release. Not, I believe not, that would improve the health of that population. Not a presumption of you know, not being put in isolation, but just being released. Is that what you're recommending? Yes, sir. Wow. So mental health problems, uh, real quick, Sheriff. How many people involved in the criminal justice system have mental health problems 
And if they weren't controlled in some fashion, there would be a harm to themselves or others. Is that a common problem you face? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, I think one of, the, one of the problems that we need to look at from both the state and maybe the federal side is the fact that we, we generally lack the space for people who are in need of mental health to go to actual mental health facilities. And those people are being shoved in the criminal justice system, uh, which they should not. But on the other side, I will tell you that from a law enforcement perspective, I will tell you that the vast majority of people that I see suffering from mental health, that mental health issue is actually the side effect of the drug abuse that they've, part they've partaken in, uh, which of course goes right back to the open border issue that we have and the drugs that are flowing in at the hands of the Mexican cartels. Thank you. Senator Hirono. 